So you want to be prepared to provide for your family in a crisis. You want to be ready. You want to do the things that you need to do to step up to the plate. Well, do you have a plan? And if you do have a plan, is it just a random plan or does it have priorities with it? Are you buying needs or are you being distracted with luxuries? You know, when I go to the grocery store, my wife sends me to buy for steak for a steak dinner and I walk in the door and I see donuts on the right. I walk back to the produce aisle and I see um, some artichokes. I walk on back to the steak. Of course, I'm going to get my steak. Walk through the checkout line. I arrive home. My wife goes, uh, where's the salad? Where are the potatoes? You know, you've got to have a list when you go to the grocery, if you're like me. And if you're planning without a list, if you're planning without a plan, or preparing without a plan, it's like going to the grocery store without a list. There are so many distractions. There are so many things that can get you off focus on your needs, not your wants. You know, we all want the high dollar rifle. We all want, you know, the high capacity magazines. We all want the $150 flashlight. But if we don't have any rice to put on the table, we're in trouble. You need to prioritize. You know, we don't have the luxury to waste our money on things we don't need if we really believe that trying times are ahead. Make your plan. Make it now and execute your plan. You know, the thing is, you can always have all these plans. We can talk about it. You can watch a million YouTube videos. But if you're not doing something, it's not going to do you a bit of good. Okay, now you have a plan. It's not going to work. Plans are doomed to fail. So why plan? Well, that's why you have a plan B. It's called a backup plan. But you know what? That's not going to work either. So you have a plan C called a contingency plan. And that plan won't work either. And so you have a D and an E for dire straits and everything else. There's an old military saying, it's FUBAR. That means effed up beyond all recognition. That's what happens to our plans. But what happens when you make a plan and then you make backup plans, contingency plans? You learn to adapt. Nothing ever goes the way that you think it will. There may be parts of it that do, but there are always these unknown elements that come in. So you need to have different plans. If all you're doing is planning for the economic collapse and rioting in the streets and people breaking down your doors, and that's what you plan for, but then you go to work tomorrow and you lose your job and then within two months you're evicted from your house because of foreclosure, you need to have plans. You need to have multiple plans. If you're as concerned as I am, and you're watching this video, then it's important to you to make the plans, the various plans that you might need. I'm going to give you an example of something that, uh, it's kind of funny, but this is the deal about plans. This, is, this sums it up to me. A man and his wife were, um, went through a divorce, a very nasty divorce. And the wife had a restraining order against her husband because he had made some threatening uh, overtones to her earlier. And so um, a buddy of mine was an EMT, and he had a call to go out to a home where a man had been shot. And the story goes like this. The husband calls the wife and says, I'm coming over and I'm going to kill you. And it scares the wife to death. Well, when the husband gets there, he has an AK-47 in his hand. He has bandoliers across his chest like Rambo. He has extra magazines all along a vest. He has a big, huge Bowie knife. He has a pistol. 
extra mag pouches for that, and just a multitude of weapons. He looked like Rambo, to be honest with you. And he walks up to the back door, and he kicks it in, and there stands this little 100-pound wife with a 22 revolver. And she puts it right to his head and pulls the trigger. And he falls right back on his back, dead as a doornail. When my buddy gets there, he said it was the most incredible scene you've ever witnessed. You know, you can get all geared up. But don't get overzealous. You need to meet your family's needs. You need to take care of your family first. That's the most important thing that you can do. Now, I have one word of caution about making plans. <laughs> making plans are no one's business but your own. And what I mean by that is, is anybody that you divulge what you're doing is on a need-to-know basis in my book. We don't tell everybody what we're doing because we don't want people knocking on our door who haven't planned. But even worse, we don't want those hearing rumors and coming up to our house and trying to take what we have put together. You know, if food becomes very scarce, people are going to get desperate. So just be careful who you tell. We talk to people that uh, are preparing along with us and we work together. But those who are not, we don't really talk about it. So just be careful. No matter what kind of plan you make, the possibilities are limitless. They're endless. And that leads me to my next point and my final point. If you don't have God in your plan, it would be very wise to put Him in a plan. You know, without Him, you don't know what tomorrow holds. Now, if you say, I don't take, I don't accept that, I don't go for that, that's fine. But don't discount everything else that we've talked about. But I just want to encourage everyone to make sure that they are right with God as they move on into these troublesome times. I wish you the best. Please subscribe. There will be more videos coming. This is just an introduction again to about our plan, which is the number one thing you need to be doing to start things out. Even if you've been preparing for a while, you need to go ahead and put a plan together. We're probably going to talk about food next, so just keep your eye out for my next video. Take care.